Good morning, Paul and Bargraf. Today is Thursday, May 4th, and here's the heads-up briefing for today. In Australasia and the Pacific Islands, we covered seven issues. In North Asia, we covered six issues. In Southeast Asia, we covered 13 issues, as well as uh, in South Asia, 12, 12 issues, along with the major developments in the EMEA region. Okay, Basil, um, appreciate it. Thanks for filling in for Uday. We're working on a project that he's going to be consumed for another few days. Appreciate you filling in. Go ahead. Um, in Australia, an anti AUKUS protest will be held between 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. local time at the Customs House Square in Sydney, New South Wales, on May 24th. It's really interesting, actually. I mean, AUKUS, I mean, if you speak to really intelligent, objective thinking officers about AUKUS and nuclear submarines supporting aircraft carriers, it's flawed. But if you speak to anyone that's got um, a very much feigned expertise and one that's always politically correct, AUKUS is the greatest thing that's ever occurred. I'm in a former group. I think um, AUKUS upsetting the French, the shift of direction, ultimately it's all about the interests and the, I I believe, misplaced interests of the United States geopolitical direction. I think it's going to be yet another move where Australia is going to regret following a stance of neutrality. And we're getting more and more bullied down under by the arrogance and ignorance of a country that wants to be the sole global leader. And ultimately, countries that aren't neutral um, are going to find out that perhaps someone else has been betting with their welfare and the stakes aren't suffered over on the American continent. They're suffered by the people closer to obviously China's growing influence. Thank you, Basil, for drawing that to my attention. In Papua New Guinea, the Porgera Development Authority's chairman, Nixian Mangabe, said that the ongoing tribal clashes in Porgera have escalated beyond, beyond the authority's control. Look, it's, it's interesting because um, there's a couple of issues I want to raise here in PNG. The first one I've harped on a lot, um, but fundamentally the government doesn't resource, plan, train security resources. It just uses it as something to point out. We've got everything under control. We just sent these guys over to that last issue. They don't have enough security. Um, they've got some really good uh, police commissioners, but... The government itself just doesn't resource security. The, the other thing is the whole over-empowerment of landowners makes maintaining a stable operating environment when you go to the exploitation phase. Now, that's a technical word, which means exploration's over, construction's over, and you're now actually pulling the resources out. The landowners' um, laws in PNG give the landowners too much power and then the government has way too much bureaucracy and that bureaucracy means that critical changes to recognize a landowner and to remunerate a landowner goes through different departments and leads to a lot of frustrations so and because there's a lack of a secure environment government officials don't want to be up in the highlands so they, so it's a it's a catch-22 you don't have security and government won't go there you need government there to make uh, decisions, government officials, and that's because the main uh, hierarchies in the government just won't uh, invest in and get right security in a country that, from a security paradigm, no other way to say it, it's completely pear shaped. Um, multinationals and NGOs love lying to employees they're moving there so that they don't uh, actually understand how dangerous and how unpredictable the risk paradigm there is. So they dress it all up as being okay, but it's not okay. There's going to be massive vicarious liability um, cases coming out of uh, incidents that occur in PNG in the future. So watch that space closely, Basil and team. Thank you. Sure, Paul. Uh, in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, the Indonesian Minister of Investment stated yesterday that Freeport Indonesia must sell an additional 10% stake to the government in order to renew its permit to operate in the country. Um, the government is seeking to increase its, its stake from 51% to 61%. Yeah, so look, I mean, 
ultimately Freeport's senior management is very concerned about um, revenues and benefits for a few and as much as they think we've cut a deal and we're going to maintain operational control when the majority shareholder is Indonesia and when they continue to seek more and more you've ultimately lost your mind you know, probably lost your mind which led to losing your mind and so on the short term a very few people of the accounting fraternity and their close friends benefited but ultimately the ability to secure the mine, understand the problems, navigate a really difficult uh, job site, um, they're going to become more and more vulnerable to outsourcing business to contractors, which are going to be increasingly uh, chosen because they're friends of the owner of the government entity that owns it. <laughs> and so the head honcho of that is going to dictate a lot of things based on commercial benefit to those nearest him. So this is a disaster for um, that company. They just probably don't want to face the realities of what it means because the longer term guys that are going to have to manage it and deal with it now are going to be managing and dealing with something that um, is just going to be a, a, a bridge too far. And uh, the question has to be raised by shareholders how, how did we lose one of the biggest resources in the world and why? And, and who's accountable for that? And I don't think that's going to happen because of relevant deflections that occur in boardrooms across vast seas. Okay, thank you. Also in Indonesia, uh, eight task teams have been formed to secure and monitor the upcoming Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit in Labuan Bajo East Nusa Tenggara. The summit is scheduled to be held between May 9th and May 11th. Um, that's interesting um, because Labuan Bajo is the launching point to go to Komodo Island. So that basically means they're going to you know, have a jaunt while they're there because Labuan Bajo is an extremely impractical place to be having a meeting like that. Um, but it's all about, you know, showing off jaunts. Uh, great that they're having that meeting. Bad that they've chosen a location that's so difficult for people to get to. Thank you. In South Asia, in India, the Manipur state government has imposed a five-day ban on mo mobile internet services across the state following clashes between various tribal groups in the area. So the suspension of internet services is a typical measure used by the Indian government whenever there is a trouble on the ground, whether it's riot or a communally sensitive uh, law which is being passed. Uh, and sometimes they've also suspended internet services during exam season to prevent cheating. So it is not a surprise that they've used a similar measure in Manipur, which is one of the more tense states for intertribal relations in the northeastern region of India. The suspension is likely to have a crippling impact within the state. However, the state is not known to be high, highly industrious. Uh, it is primarily populated by four or five uh, tribal communities, including Maites, which is the majority, 50%, while the others include Nagas, Kukis, Mizos, and a few others. This should not have an impact on the regional security paradigm in the Northeast. Uh, it may have a limited impact to some extent, but not across the region, and certainly will not have an impact on national politics or security paradigm. Noted, Bhargav. Uh, moving over to the EMEA region, in Germany, the Verdi Union, which was one of the biggest unions in Germany, has called for public transportation strikes in multiple states today. Um, these states include Lower Saxony, North Rhine-Westphalia, Bavaria, and Baden-Württemberg uh, in uh, Germany. It is a sad state of affairs in Europe. France is plugged 
or the horse or it has plunged itself into a series of protests and nationwide uh, strikes and the situation doesn't seem to be very dissimilar in germany with multiple strikes in the last year or so uh, primarily due to cost of living issues and uh, the pay rises across the you know labor unions so we'll have to see how best europe can resurrect itself from the current crisis Regarding the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, authorities accused, Russian authorities accused Ukraine of a failed attempt to assassinate President Vladimir Putin in a drone attack at the Kremlin citadel yesterday. If this is actually an attack by the Ukrainian forces at, at the direction of the political leadership, this is going to be a major escalation on the Western side, made, led by Ukraine, of course. And uh, Russia will not take this lightly. Uh, so we can expect further escalation on the ground in Ukraine and far more directed, targeted attacks at Ukrainian leadership. So we'll have to see uh, how the situation evolves and if this is proven to be true. Sure, Bhargav, we'll keep a closer eye on that. In uh, Africa, in Guinea, civil society groups yesterday said that nationwide anti-government protests will resume this month on May 10th, 11th, 17th, 18th, 24th, and 25th after the negotiations with the government failed yesterday. Thank you, Vassar. Nothing further from my end. In Guinea Bargav, we uh, have updated our clients to assist their awareness of the event as well. Thank you.